In 2019, Washington believed that severing Huawei's access to American technology would be a game changer, a move that would bring the Chinese tech giant to its knees. But instead of collapsing, Huawei flipped the script, creating a whole new battlefield. Today, the West finds itself on the defensive, caught in a trap of its own making. What started as a tactical strike has exposed a glaring weakness, one that could permanently alter the future of global technology. Here's how it all went down. In May 2019, the U.S. government placed Huawei on its entity list, cutting off access to key suppliers like Qualcomm, Intel, Broadcom, and Google. Secretary of Commerce Wilbur Ross claimed the move would be the death knell for Huawei and China's ambitions in tech. The assumption was simple. Without American-made semiconductors and software, Huawei would falter, dragging China's entire tech ecosystem down with it. After all, at the time, Huawei relied on the U.S. for over 45% of its smartphone components, and its devices ran on Android, critical for global sales. By June 2019, the Wall Street Journal was even predicting that Huawei could face extinction without American chips. To Washington, the blacklisting wasn't just a sanction. It was meant to be a financial death sentence. But what they didn't account for was that Huawei had already seen this coming and had a plan in place. Instead of crumbling, Huawei adapted quickly, giving them a surprising new edge. Huawei had anticipated the move for years. Before the sanctions were even officially announced, the company began stockpiling essential components. According to Bloomberg, Huawei spent $23 billion in 2018 alone acquiring U.S. parts, preparing for a worst-case scenario. By the time the sanctions hit, Huawei had enough inventory to keep production running for up to two years. This gave the company the breathing room it needed to regroup, rethink, and innovate. While the West expected a setback, Huawei didn't miss a beat. The company accelerated its push to become more self-reliant. In September 2019, they launched the Kirin 990 chip, developed in-house. Within a year, the chip reduced their dependency on foreign suppliers by over 40%. But that was just the start. Huawei also fast-tracked the release of its Harmony OS, an operating system they had been quietly developing since 2012. In less than two years, they shipped over 200 million devices running Harmony OS in China, regaining market share without relying on Google's services. What was supposed to be a crisis for Huawei turned into a catalyst for innovation. Meanwhile, the West was still focused on the short-term hardware disruption, failing to grasp Huawei's bigger strategy. By late 2020, it was reported that nearly 70% of Huawei's suppliers had already switched to domestic or non-US alternatives. This wasn't just a response to sanctions. It was part of Huawei's long-term plan to rebuild its entire supply chain. Between 2019 and 2023, the company's annual R&D budget skyrocketed from $15 billion to $24 billion, outpacing even Apple's research spending. And then there was the political shift. The 2018 arrest of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou in Canada became a defining moment for the company. What started as a corporate issue became a national cause, fueling Chinese patriotism and support for Huawei. The company was no longer just a business. It was a symbol of sovereignty. When politics and technology collide, things get messy, and forecasts based on market data alone quickly lose their accuracy. By 2024, as U.S. telecom giants like Verizon and AT&T struggled with delayed 5G rollouts, Huawei was charging ahead with 5.5G technology. The new network promised speeds of up to 10 Gbps, ultra-low latency, and AI-powered network optimization, far surpassing anything the U.S. had managed. By early 2025, Huawei had rolled out 5.5G in 28 Chinese cities and 14 international markets, while U.S. carriers were still dealing with spotty service in major cities. Huawei's significant investments in AI, quantum communication, and terahertz technology had positioned them years ahead of the U.S. in these cutting-edge fields. What started as a battle over smartphones had evolved into a full-blown technological arms race, and Huawei was leading the charge. But Huawei wasn't stopping there. Behind closed doors, they were laying the groundwork for something even more ambitious. Leaked internal memos from 2024 revealed Project Delete America, a radical plan to eliminate all American technology and dependencies from Huawei's ecosystem by 2025. Initially, it seemed like corporate bravado, but considering Huawei's history of turning obstacles into advantages, it was clear they were serious. What began as a dispute over smartphones has transformed into a seismic shift in the global tech landscape. Huawei isn't just competing anymore. They're setting the stage for the next era of technological dominance. As the West struggles to keep pace, the real question is whether they can ever regain control, or if Huawei will define the future on its own terms. The rules have changed, and the game has just begun. By late 2024, Huawei made waves by launching its Meta ERP system, 
fully independent from Oracle, Microsoft, and SAP software, handling all of its global operations internally. By early 2025, Harmony OS devices took 23% of China's smartphone market, displacing Android's long-held dominance. Meanwhile, Huawei's custom-built Asai chips, powered by its proprietary Kungpang architecture, began replacing NVIDIA's GPUs in Chinese data centers. This was more than just a corporate boycott, it was a strategic move that Beijing took notice of. Under the Made in China 2025 initiative, Huawei's self-reliance model became the cornerstone, accelerating domestic chip manufacturing at SMIC, pushing for semiconductor partnerships with BRICS nations, and driving a government-backed innovation fund surge, totaling $1.3 trillion across key sectors. As reported by Bloomberg in March 2025, Huawei's transformation wasn't merely about surviving. It was a blueprint for China's future. The strategy? Decouple first, dominate second. But the real game changer was what Huawei was quietly working on next, which could disrupt even these successes. And this shift is already leaking beyond China's borders. When Huawei unveiled the Mate 60 Pro in August 2024, powered by its own 7 nanometer Kirin 9000S chip fabricated at SMIC in China, analysts at CounterPoint Research noted an alarming development. Huawei regained 17% of China's premium smartphone market in just five months, overtaking Apple. Qualcomm, once a dominant supplier for China's high-end smartphones, saw its revenue in China drop by 55% year-over-year by Q1 2025, according to SEC filings. But this wasn't just a Chinese phenomenon. Global markets felt the impact too. In Southeast Asia, smartphone sales from Chinese brands surged by 26%, fueled by Huawei's comeback while Qualcomm's international licensing revenue dipped by 11% as reported by Bloomberg. The underlying issue was clear. Huawei's rise wasn't powered by U.S. technology. It was driven by China's independence. If American firms thought Huawei would fade after sanctions, the data proved them wrong. And Qualcomm's nightmare was far from isolated. A much larger trap was closing in on the entire U.S. tech supply chain. In early 2025, President Trump authorized a massive 145% tariff on Chinese tech imports intending to cripple Huawei, Xiaomi, and Lenovo. However, by February 2025, the backlash was overwhelming. U.S. laptop prices shot up by 28% overnight, and domestic PC shipments fell 19% in Q1, the worst contraction since 2013, according to Gartner. Small electronics retailers warned that these tariffs could cost the U.S. economy up to 192,000 jobs within two years if exemptions weren't granted, according to the National Retail Federation. Faced with mounting pressure from businesses and voters, the White House quietly granted exemptions for critical imports, including laptops, smartphones, and semiconductor components. By March 2025, this move was described by Reuters as a tactical retreat under economic strain. The irony was stark. The tariffs meant to break China's tech dominance only served to deepen its entrenchment in the U.S. consumer market, and the dependence was becoming increasingly systemic. In fact, despite the tech war, the data was unforgiving. According to S&P Global Market Intelligence, 31% of laptops sold in the U.S. in early 2025 contained Chinese processors, displays, or key components, up from just 18% in 2021. The Semiconductor Industry Association reported that while the U.S. spent over $52 billion on chip subsidies, 58% of America's low-end fabrication equipment still relied on Chinese vendors like Nora and AAC. Even more alarmingly, Internal memos leaked from Best Buy revealed that over 40% of entry-level laptops and smartphones sold in the U.S. featured Chinese-designed components. Cutting China off wasn't just failing, it was creating deeper entanglements. The Wall Street Journal editorialized in April 2025 that the U.S. tech sector was now more intertwined with Chinese manufacturing than before the sanctions began, and what was once seen as strategic leverage had transformed into a major vulnerability. By 2025, the verdict was clear. Huawei had re-emerged as a symbol of Chinese resilience, showcasing America's inability to predict or prevent such rapid adaptation. According to Bloomberg, Huawei's revenue had jumped by 14.2% year-over-year in Q1 2025, with smartphone shipments up by 64% inside China and 22% internationally. Primarily driven by markets in the Middle East and Southeast Asia, eager to adopt non-US alternatives. Meanwhile, American firms like Qualcomm, Intel, and Micron warned shareholders of long-term risks tied to China, according to their latest SEC filings. On a structural level, China's National Tech Self-Sufficiency Index, which tracks the domestic use of critical sector components, 
had risen to 78% by early 2025, up from 46% just five years earlier. This acceleration of China's tech sector wasn't slowing down. It was on overdrive. And as Huawei's playbook began to spill over into China's AI, quantum computing, and fintech sectors, the true cost of miscalculating the rise of Chinese tech was becoming clear. Because if technology was meant to ensure America's dominance for the next century, this conflict may have just hastened its decline. But if you think Huawei's resurgence is limited to smartphones and 5G, think again. China isn't just targeting Silicon Valley's turf. It's quietly laying the groundwork for an alternative global financial system. And soon, even the US dollar may find itself in a fight for survival. Stick around, because what's coming next makes the Huawei comeback look like just the beginning. If you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe.